Sadie chooses the choruses and hymns, and I did practice this week, so I've been a very good boy, I did my homework, so I'm guaranteed to get it wrong now that I practiced it. <laughs> so if I'm stuttering and stammering and spattering, she's got a mic there to carry it on. But welcome, lovely to see you here this morning, Arlene. After your sojourn away, thank you for coming in this morning. You see, you've, we spread out like the sheep of Israel. Yeah. So, 
you're, you're, I think you're quite safe there. And a warm welcome to Tony. Nice to see you. And to his friend Eric Gilchrist. So ex Quekwe. Oh, um, that's nice. Lord bless you, welcome. Amen. Amen. Um, so, the most important thing in a fellowship is to allow the Spirit mm -hmm. to lead. Mm -hmm. And this morning, if you will, let the Lord minister to you as much as you minister to Him. Mm -hmm. And it's always wonderful, the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go yes. up to the house of the Lord. Just before we start, I'm going to bring Russi Erastus, especially before the Lord. Russi is not well. I think he must be the most stubborn patient on earth. And I think we have to pray for him. Well, I'm true. Congregation is true. You members talk to him. Anyway, we. We were well received at your home the other day. Thank you, and your tortoises are doing fine. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I did. <laughs> anyway, so let's just commit the service to the Lord, bow our heads, and, and I'm going to bring Rusty, especially oh, before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you that mm. we're able to come into your house mm. again to worship, mm. to bring our collective offering of praise and the sacrifice of our lips to your throne. This morning, Lord, we ask that you administer to each and everyone, and to our friends, Lord, who are abroad and who can't be here today, that they too, Lord, might receive of you today's manna for today. And Lord Jesus, we bring our brother Rasi before you. Heavenly Father, it is your Holy Spirit that quickens the mortal body to your honor and to your glory. And so we bring him before you. We ask, Lord, for healing. We ask, Lord, that you would touch him and make him every bit whole. Mm -hmm. And also, Lord, to help and with him, Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, it is a very difficult and challenging situation. Mm -hmm. But when the Holy Spirit moves in, yes. things are so much different. Mm -hmm. So we commit Ani and Rasi to you now. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Continue with us, Lord, as we worship you mm -hmm. and serve you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Amen. We're going to um, start with the hymn, Sing the Wondrous Love of Jesus, and then we'll go on to the choruses, so you can please stand. Oh, sorry, 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 I'm in big trouble. I'm blessed and I know it that I am. Do you just stay seated, relax? <laughs> Is that the okay? Do you need it? Just hold on, folks. Yes. 
blessed today because there are three Eric's in the church today. Oh. Yep. Eric, Eric, and Eric. <laughs> so if you ask me anything and I don't really want to deal with it, I'm going to just <laughs> ignore you. <laughs> Amen. Right, are you blessed? Amen. Let's stand and sing that hymn. <laughs>
You know, we really are blessed with our musicians. Thank you so much. Um, we know that it's through the music that we're able to enter into the presence of the Most High God. It's not the only way. But this is God's special way. And, and music is a very complex thing. And it can be used for good or for ill. But in this house, we praise the Lord for the anointing on our musicians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we thank the Lord. Thank you very, very much. The Lord bless you. Just a few minutes. Anybody would like to testify? Give a testimony. Pray. and thank the Lord that my son would have been 65 today. He's been, he got, went home in 2002, but I praise and thank the Lord that he got to know him as his Lord and Savior. In fact, before 
on day and night. Him and Alwyn went to a church, Baptist church, where we used to take them to Sunday school on a Sunday uh, in Rhodesia. And um, they came out and he said to me, oh, somebody came to the car and said, um, Barry and Alwyn won't be long, but just give them their heart, just go and give their hearts to Jesus. So I looked at Dave, I was Methodist, and being a Methodist son school, played for the son school all my life. I said, I don't know what that means, Dave, but it sounds good. You know? <laughs> and then eventually they came out and they told us they'd given their hearts to the Lord. Right. And that was a big one, because long, not long after that, so did we get saved and born again. And I praise and thank the Lord, because the children brought it to the parents. It's very important, brothers and sisters, let your family know that you serve a precious and a wonderful Savior. Yeah. Yeah. So, I first met Barry in Rio Road and there was this guy with this fuzzy hair. He looked wild. And he probably looked at me and thought, who's this guy checking out my sister? But he was a wonderful person, very, very talented at music, yes. gifted, taken home way too soon for us. But if we question why, we'll never get the answer. We just have to yield to the sovereign will of God. And, but you were blessed with a wonderful son. Amen. That's it. Good morning, family. Uh, I'm standing on front of my family. I just want to thank him. As I worship the living Father, of which is our God, my God, uh, he is the reason why I say hallelujah, praise God. Uh, I'm standing here in front of my family. I just want to thank the living Father for protecting us during this difficult year. We went through until at this time. He's protecting us during lockdown time. Uh, if it started, I was really stressed and nervous. I didn't know God, how I'm gonna live, how I'm gonna survive. So, but because the God that we praise in Him is our God. I never saw anything problem like maybe taking care of our life, like for example, like running short of something because we praise him, we worship him, he's always protecting us. He always putting food on the table. So I just want to say thanks God. I'm standing off uh, I'm standing on front of the family as now it's towards to Christmas time. I'm still uh, inviting Jesus Christ to protect us. Amen. During uh, Christmas time, we're going to meet our families. We're going to travel the long uh, way to go to Malaga. And like today is the last day to attend the service. Next week already, I think on the 18th is my last day at work. So I'm going away. So I ask him again to protect me even if I come to step 2021. To protect my wife, to protect my family, to protect you, my family. So I love you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll say we know where you live because Sandy and I drove to Bushbuck Ridge and we saw the Malalia Family Council. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. You know, they're so important. Count your blessings. Yeah. Name them one by one. Yeah. Many people have experienced terrible difficulties with work and that. But what did Elsie say? I've always been provided for. Yes. Sandy says, manna for every day. Yes. Each day. Just enough. Yes. But manna nonetheless. Yes. Good morning, everybody. I could not miss this opportunity of giving thanks and praise to our God. He is truly our
are our Father. He is our all in all. I stand here just to testify. I could stand here and go on the entire day um, testifying of the goodness of God and His faithfulness, His provision, His protection, and everything else that He provides for us. Joy, peace, happiness, things that money can, cannot buy. You just cannot put a price to the gifts that our Heavenly Father gives us. And, um, you know, the year has been a tough one for everybody. And um, I personally have been facing, um, you know, challenges on different levels for the past two years, I could say. But like I said, if I stand here, and I could go on for maybe the whole week. But I just want to say thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And he is a faithful father. He never fails. He just never fails. All he asks is that we put our trust and our faith in him. And that's what I've been doing through my many, many challenges. And you know what? He's never failed me yet. Mm -hmm. And I believe that he is not about to. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? I just want to give thanks and praise and glory to God for his goodness and his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Jeremy. And thank you for seeing that your precious mom always comes to our fellowship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we're very, very blessed. But the Lord bless you. Thank you for that. Uh, we can't judge us on beauty because <laughs> um, yeah. the Lord's laid upon my heart that this score is uh, God has a thousand ways to answer every prayer. And I don't know why, since this morning, since I walked in, it's been pressing this score on my heart all the time. But um, thank you very much for everyone that's prayed for me. Um, I had the angiogram done. Uh, they found two narrowings. Uh, but believe us or not, they said even if they could, uh, if they if they if they if they wanted to close uh, to open it, he says my veins are too big. They haven't got stems big enough for my veins. I'm not the first one that is found, I'm the third person so far that is found with such big veins. So apart from that, is, uh, he said it's not necessary, it's not dangerous at this moment, it says the veins are okay. Um, but the sugar, I praise the Lord that it came down from 18. The last reading that we did in hospital was 5.8. So I praise God for it really worked. And it's your prayers, I know it's the prayers God has. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. I'd, I'd just like to, to thank the Lord for a little bit of a breakaway. I, uh, I was saying to somebody the other day, you know, this year has been particularly difficult. And during the last nine months, my, my outing of the week was going to the spa on a Saturday morning to buy fresh bread rolls and cold meats. That was like, like it for me. So uh, it was quite depressing or whatever, but we enjoyed a couple of days in the bush which is like my kind of place in my holiday, and uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, the other thing is that when I got back, um, I was given a particularly hard task by our board of directors to go and uh, do, uh, obviously business has been pretty bad, but we had to do a couple of repossessions, which we don't normally get involved in. And it's always an ugly business, and it's always when you've got people who owe money and whatever, it just becomes ugly, and I had to go and uh, sort this whole lot out for the last few weeks. But he protected me. The Lord protected me and made sure I came home every day that there weren't any unrealistic situations or situations too difficult that we couldn't cope with or deal with. And uh, it, we finished it on, on Thursday and it's all done and dusted and then for the year. But I give him all the thanks and glory yes. because uh, his holding hand was upon me and uh, yes. he just saw us through it. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. We just don't realize how the Lord does help us in our day to day tasks. Yeah. Now, again, if you lose any more weight, I'm going to have to return your jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I benefited from quite a few nice suits and things when you put on some weight. It looks like I might have a take you. Oh, I said to Marianne today, I should be a chef. I'm not skinny, so I'd be a good chef. Um, we're going to take up the offering, but I'm going to ask Anne to put up the Calypso Carol. 
I should actually get the youth to come and sing it. Hey, hey, no. we, we taught it to the youth last Sunday evening and they really enjoyed it. Am I right? When you hear it, you'll let me know. <laughs> right. Um, come, so Delia, you come and take up the offering for us. not to boast or anything like that, but your ministry at Sunday school that sees every child that comes in here get presented with the gospel, and I don't believe one leaves without being saved, has resulted in a continued ministry into the youth church. And you might not know it or see it, but Jesus has changed lives. And Sandile and his brother Mandisi elect to start a fast, a Daniel fast, the 1st of January this year. They've stuck to it. They have kept to it because they want to know the Lord Jesus better. They told me the other day when we had McDonald's here, youth, we are looking forward to the 1st of January. <laughs> but that's the wonderful thing, that it's the whole church that's experiencing change in their lives from the youngest to the oldest and change for the better we prayed many many years for revival you know it starts in the house of god Amen. and i just thank the lord that covid has not abated our spirits if anything maybe strengthened us 
to show us we have to depend on the Lord. And Geraldine, your, your testimony goes hand in glove with what I have to minister on today. The Lord is a wonderful, wonderful Savior. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Let's stand as we see that. Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. I'll read when I hear the title stop roughly. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. One scripture. A merry heart with good like medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Happiness, joy, and gladness. This is what I want to share with you today. It is all said, and I believe it is true. That one makes your own happiness. We make our own happiness. 
And this scripture is so very, very true. The word Mary here is not the describing of that short-lived sense of happiness when one has carried a bit too long with the wine and over-imbibed with the spirit of alcohol. And if you haven't experienced that merriness, the advice is don't try. Teenagers. <laughs> but the Hebrew meaning of this word merry is very clear. Lemma. To be joyful. To be merry. To be glad. It's a word that inspires and invokes happiness. And it is one that describes to show joy and also gives the meaning to a person who is rejoicing. And you know how often is it said when you see a person, that person is downcast. You can just see how they walk, how they carry their bearing, and yet the happy and joyful person who's got the joy of the Lord in their heart is upright and sprightly and can move. Just look at people around you. Go to the shopping center. You'll see those weary with the burdens of this world. And friends, we are weary with the burdens of this world. They're very hard to bear. And you and I can't escape from all the things that we have to. Very few people I know can make ends meet. And it's just this constant struggle. But the Christian struggles differently. Amen. The Christian bears these burdens differently for he casts his cares upon Jesus. And when he casts his cares upon Jesus, Jesus is able to bear him and carry him and help him and to give you the strength. Strength for each and every day. Never will he allow you to be tried above that which you're able to be. And so this medicine of joy and gladness, of merriment, this me medicine of happiness is for the whole person. And what do I mean for the whole person? It is applied to body, soul, and spirit. Not just to the body. That's what you get when you're drinking too much. And then the next morning you wonder why you got a headache. But when Jesus brings to you and you find your joy in Him, it's body, soul, and spirit. The whole person. And I'm not going to give you a discourse here of the medical science of depression and sadness. And of all of its terrible effects on the human mind and on the body. And I would hazard, even as I am, I take a medicine to help the serotonin in my body. Because we work, we, sometimes you should be thankful for Esther when they switch the lights off. That we should go to bed as God intended us to early. And then get up like Anne, wake the roost up. You're like my mom, Anne, wakes the roost up, do your job, gets going. But our lives are so busy in that and we wear ourselves down and we find ourselves spent. Yeah. And depression, I remember Pastor Davis preaching a sermon on the devil selling all his tools, but he said, I'll keep one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Depression. Mm -hmm. Because with that, he will control you. And you know what he will do with it? He will destroy you. Yeah. So I'm not going to give you that whole biological, medical science issue around the problem that we already know exists. Today I want to encourage you in the word of the Creator. I want to encourage you in the word that God, our Heavenly Father, has spoken and that Jesus Christ Himself is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The Word was God, and His name is Jesus. You see, the problem exists. But if we go to the Creator and to His Word, then 
we can find the antidote. For God said, let us make man in our image. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And so for the one who made you and I, a scriptural discourse is far better and far greater than any medical science can give you. For after all, whose word would you first believe? That of the manufacturer, the great I am who made you and I in his own image? Or, and I do not decry psychiatrists and psychologists, would you go and believe the word of a man? Sister Carter testified about her own son who passed away. We sent Pastor Sister Carter over to Canada and she said straight to Barry, you don't need a psychiatrist, you need a physician. His body was starved of oxygen. He had major blockages and that took his life. But for three years he'd been at the psychiatrist who diagnosed him with 500 different things and this pull and that thing. But never diagnosed him with the Word of God. And today, my friends, leave Dr. Google alone and flee to the Word, the eternal Word. Amen. If you're depressed and downcast, go here first. Medical science helps. It is important, I've told you myself. But this is the place where you'll find your help. My friend, listen to the scriptures and let the Holy Ghost help you from today onwards to change your heart and your mind towards that of happiness in Christ Jesus. You see, Nehemiah, he had this vision and this desire to go and restore Jerusalem and the temple that was destroyed and broken down and the walls were smashed. And the jackals lived there. He committed to the Most High God. And he worked hard to restore that broken down city. Nehemiah, through the Lord's help, and through the help of the congregation of Israel, was able to restore the rightful place of worship of the Most High God to his people. And, in, and during their labors, and at the end of that restoration of work, he had this to say. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. You see, they rested from their labors and renewed their strength in the Lord. And you, my friend, and I, as we work and we're around the hustle and bustle, it is so important that in and during that process, and I believe this is why Daniel would have prayed three times a day, he just needed through all the pressure and the work that was assigned to him just to stop and reset the balance between him and the one who created him. Otherwise, the world will overwhelm us. My friend, let today be the first day of a new restoration of your faith in Jesus Christ. Let us get back to the basics and there's no rocket science about it. I know Brother Dave Ball shared with you the other week the five basic pillars of your Christian faith. That they are so true. Daniel prayed three times a day. I gave you my reasons why I thought he did. In the scriptures and reading the word is such restoration to your soul and guidance. And I, I'll never forget my dad sitting on the end of his bed. My dad didn't pass Form 3. I got his school report 
He apparently did pass English and Math. All his other su subjects he failed. And I was deciding to go to Zimbabwe. And you know what he did? He said, Eric, he was sitting with his Bible open. God hasn't shown me from the word if we're doing the right thing. But you make the decision between you and God. And you and Sandy. And we'll do our best we can. But what a signpost. God hasn't shown me. And when you've got a major decision to make in your life, God will show it to you. Otherwise, keep going. You don't need neon signs and lightning every five minutes. You know, God only spoke to Moses like once every 40 years. So don't feel neglected. Live your life every day. Get on with it. As Pastor Carter said to you, our cousin Russell's story one day, Russell, God gave you a brain, for goodness sake, use it. But let me tell you, there are junctures in your life when you need the confirmation of the word. Not of Eric Flint, not of Pastor so-and-so, not of Prophet so-and-so, yeah. of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And he speaks to you from here. Yeah. And we all grow in this word. The fellowship is never underestimated. It is so important that we come together and strengthen one another and pray one for another. And I never forget when Lauren said, I'm taking church to Auntie Willie, but she couldn't be here. That's the fellowship in the body of Christ. To witness, you know, to, uh, it's not every, I can't do what Graham used to do, man. Ask Jenny. You can, you can. Graham would get us to come and hand out tracks. Oh, this is not do I but Graham did. He had rhinoceros skin. I've got little beauty skin. Baby skin. <laughs> but, you know, you know when God is telling you to speak to that soul. And you might think, I'm going to get fired. You never know. Answer to the Spirit. Witness. Because the soul winner's joy is one of the greatest joys. You know, the angels in heaven rejoice. Amen. How much more should we rejoice when just one soul comes home? And to tithe and to give. Abraham worshipped and gave to Melchizedek, the high priest, Jesus Christ, actually, in the Old Testament. But give willingly. You'll find a remarkable joy and inner strength when you return in full assurance of faith to the basics of Jesus Christ. Listening to these scriptures, many speak for themselves. The first scripture I want to share with you is a dire warning against a negative attitude towards God. And we do not want to be there. Depression, sadness, despair, everything opposite to the joy and the peace of Jesus Christ is from the pit of hell. Yeah. It's a curse. In Deuteronomy, this is the scripture, 28 verse 45 to 48. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because, because thou hast hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all these things. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. My friend, the very first thing, you want help? Get back to the word. Because you hearkenest not unto me. Because you do not keep my commandments and my statutes. 
because you don't serve me with joyfulness. Isn't that interesting? There's nothing worse than serving out of servitude's sake. But to serve with joy and gladness. So friends, the first thing changed here. Changed here. Look on the bright side. You're stuck in the mud, put it in four-wheel drive. And get out of it. Get back to the basics. Start by just being in his house. That'll help you. Start by doing those basic things again. The Psalms and the Proverbs have many references to joy and gladness and happiness. And I will share a few for you. The King shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation. How greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and has not withholden the request of his lips. Friend, you can have your joy in God's strength. Now that is a very, very important aspect. Because in Christ, I can do all things. In Christ's strength, I have no fear of the world and what it can do to me. For who is the provider of the bread of my soul? So the psalmist here in Psalm 21 verse 1 and 2. He, the King David, says, I shall joy in thy strength. And so my friend, know who guards you, who guides you, under whose feathers you can come to trust, and under whose wings you can shelter the Almighty God. And you can have joy because of his strength. Thank you, Lord. Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. But you can also have joy in his strength. Yeah. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> in Psalm 27, verse 4 to 6. One thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For in the time of trouble, He shall hide me in His pavilion. In the secret of His tabernacle shall He hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. And friends, when troubles come, as surely they will be here. Offer the sacrifice of joy. When you least feel like praising him, let that amen squeak out. And then shout it out. You will get the victory. Trouble will come, but he'll shelter you in his provision. Yes. Trouble will come because we live in this world. We're bound for a wonderful and greater city. But today, I must continue with my pilgrimage. But he will bear you through it all. Offer the sacrifice of joy. You know, when you least feel like rejoicing, rejoice. Yes. Psalm 89, justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day. And in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. You see, my friend, God is glorified through your joy in Him. And people will observe you and wonder, are you mad? Are you lunatic? Why have you got joy? 
for the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. And when you retain your joy and your gladness, God is glorified. Yeah. And is that not what our lives are about to bring pleasure to Him? And in so doing, we place ourselves under His full care. Having a hard time? How about the Israelites when they are taken into captivity? And you think is all is lost. But I tell you, my friend, as you find your way home to Jesus, the redeemed of the Lord shall return Amen. and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their head. Amen. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sign shall flee away. Amen. Isaiah writes, Awake, awake, put on strength. O arm of the Lord, awake, as in the ancient days and the generations of old. Are thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Art thou now it which hath dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, and hath made the depth of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over? Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return, and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning. Proverbs, he says, He that handleth the matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth the Lord, happy is he. So, my friend, will you renew your faith in Jesus? You know that joy and gladness, they're infectious. They're just infectious. Bring the light into the room. It dispels darkness. Bring a happy soul and fellow into a building, into a group of people, and it dispels the gloom. This is one infectious thing that there should be no antivirus or antidote for. Even the Lord the word says, rejoices over him. How much more should we rejoice over him? Zephaniah says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love, and he will joy over thee with singing. I encourage you, friends, grasp these scriptures. Go back and search them and know that your God is with you. Yes, we have to be careful. There's a COVID pandemic out there. I praise God. He has shielded our congregation and we must remain vigilant and careful. But do I have to be fearful of all its consequences? Oh, I've been through the mill. But he's a wonderful Savior. Yes. Excuse me. is a wonderful, wonderful Savior. Paul writes in Ephesians, Be not drunk with wine, where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God, and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, and meekness and long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man ever quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, to all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Friends, 
I pray you'll find your joy. Heaps of it. Piles of it. In Jesus Christ. For he is your strength. And remember, he is glorified through our joy. He is not glorified through our depression and our bemoaning and everything else. We sing songs, we sing hymns, we encourage one another, and we offer it up as a sacrifice of praise. The Lord bless you, and honestly, I pray that you'll think about this every day, and lift yourself up in the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Uncle Adrian, would you say a word of prayer for us, please? Heavenly Father, we bring ourselves to you this morning. Above all things, we ask one thing that you will open your word to our hearts. Let your Holy Spirit guide us, even if we read something small, but what it will mean to us, what it will do for us. Because your word is settled in heaven. Oh God, we need you to lead us from day to day. We bless you this morning, Lord, for your word. Without your word, where will we be today? Your word took us and made us kings and queens of the most high God. We bless you this morning, Lord, for Eric and what he's given to us. We thank you, Lord, that we can take that word and go with singing and rejoicing. But let us do it, Lord. Let us not just think about it. Go and sit down and take a, a psalm or a, a word and, and analyze it with the help of your Holy Spirit that we should be more useful when we take your word to others, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, my God, that you help us, that you lead us, that you guide us, above all, that you love us. Thank you. Oh, God, we bless you this morning. We bless you, we bless you, Lord. And as we leave, my God, we ask you morning, that we will go with joy in our hearts, Amen. for seeing that this afternoon things might change in our life, tomorrow morning, this week, because your word was and is and will be in our hearts. Mm. We ask it in Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Uncle The Lord bless you. Right, we're going to sing a hymn. And it's linked to his, uh, what's it? Tune and give me oil in my lap. And I've got the right words. I've got printed words. The people know the words. I don't have to show them. <laughs> Ooh, my brain's got lazy. Have you noticed? And, you know, Devin, don't ask him a, a, a question expecting a short answer. But um, you see, my brain's a Thinking differently now, it's not finding information that you retained from long ago. It's just where do I go and search for it? Yes. To Doctor Google and to do, you know. Somebody said it. Jenny Beach's seventieth birthday. What did you people do in the old days? It's just like twenty-one, you know, as if old days. <laughs> but um, yeah, we've got the benefit of the words. Yeah, long ago we just used to remember them. Okay, what a wonderful Savior is Jesus. Let's stand. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, what a wonderful friend is He, glory level and glory on heaven, came to earth and die on Calvary, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Thank you. Amen. 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 Soon and very soon. Isn't that what you're going to sing? That's what you said after the service. <laughs> Soon and very soon.